Imagine you were an incredibly creative person. What would you create? Did you know that study shows creativities? creativity is a skill and you can learn to be more creative? Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Diane LaFoon and I'm here with your joy tip of the week. So if you were this incredibly creative person, what would you create? Tell me in the comments or reply and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. You know, many people have this assumption that uh, creativity is just an inborn talent. It's something that we are um, just, cre we were created <laughs> as humans either to be creative or not. We're either, you know, left brain dominant people where we have um, analytical, realistic, practical, you know, logical types of, of traits, or we're right brain dominant people who are the creative ones, the passionate ones, the ones who have tasteful, colorful, vivid, vivid imaginations. And guess what? Research shows that that is wrong. Creativity can be learned. You can cultivate creativity and it's something that um, takes your whole brain. The creative process is quite a process when no matter what you're creating, what you're doing. Um, and it takes everything from some of those logical things that we need in our left brain um, to those vivid, colorful things that we need from our right brain. It's a whole brain activity and research shows that. So you can um, cre uh, uh, develop creativity and you can be more creative than you think you can. There's so many people, and I, I have a tendency to do this and say, I'm not creative at all. But if you exercise that skill, if you practice some things, you can develop that creativity and it's been proven. Um, so the entire process, again, from um, beginning of creation to whatever you've created involves so many different aspects of our brain and our cognitive process, both unconscious and conscious, both emotional, mental, um, e even the motor skills. There's just so many different things that go into creativity that, um, you know, it's just a whole person thing. So there's lots of different things we can do. But first, let's let's hear um, from Steve Jobs. He would say, I would say he was one of the most creative people, um, the way he came up with some very um cutting edge um, technical tools for us to use. And, and he was a very creative man. And he said, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little, a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. And that's because they were able to connect experiences they've had and synthesize new things. So a lot of it has to do with our experiences as well. And we'll talk about that more here in just a minute. So do you feel like you lack creativity? You can be more creative. I know you can. You have it in you and it just takes practice. And honestly, this is a lesson I am learning as well um, because it does take practice. You have to do some certain things in order to develop that creative skill. So first, one of the things you can do to cultivate creativity is to ask questions. You know, ask questions like, what if this, or why not that, or how can this be done? How can this be improved? Are there alternatives here? What am I missing? You know, I asked just one of those kinds of questions um, this, this last week. We had a family dinner and I needed a sauce for some meat that I was serving and we didn't have any kind of sauce that I was looking for. So I made up one <laughs> and I just kept tasting it and thinking, oh, it needs a little more of this. Um, how can this be improved? I kept asking and honestly, I had a little uh, taste tester help for that as well. And so I just kept adding this and that until we got the perfect sauce that we wanted and it turned out great and everybody enjoyed it. So that is a creative skill, just exercising and asking things like why not? What if? How else can we do this? What can be approved here? So in anything that you're doing, ask some questions. Secondly, um, learning new things that I talk about quite frequently and creativity do go hand in hand. Successful creators don't just like knowledge, they have a hungry mind. Do you have a hungry mind? Do you have a thirsty mind? Or are you satisfied and content? Because if you're satisfied and content, you're not going to seek to learn those new, new things and you're not going to exercise and practice to be uh, exercise that creative skill that you can uh, develop as well. Learning is a lifelong process. And, you know, it's interesting. I uh, just recently watched an interview with former President George W. Bush and his wife, Laura. And um, it was very interesting to me. He's decided to take up painting. In fact, he's just released a book called Out of Many One, and he painted 
43 portraits of America's immigrants and then told their stories um, along with their portraits in the book. And politics aside, it was a very interesting interview. I enjoyed it very much. And so he asked, he was asked, you know, why did you start painting? And at first he said he was inspired by Winston Churchill. But then he went on to say that after he has left office, I wasn't fulfilled in the sense that I wasn't learning enough. He said the presidency is an unbelievable learning experience. And so President George W. Bush knows that you've got to continue to learn new things. And that exercises that creativity skill. And I'll tell you that Laura Bush, who was also on the interview, made sure that we all knew that his painting skills were not up to par right at first, that it took practice and it took time. Um, and now he's created this book. Um, I believe he has another book of, of some portraits, too. Um, but I, I just found it was very interesting that at you know, his age that he's decided to take up painting and he's developed that creative skill. So it's kind of given me the desire. Maybe I'll take up that kind of thing as well. I've never been one to draw or paint or do anything like that, but it might be interesting to see what could happen if I tried to develop that skill. Do you like to draw or paint? I'd love to hear from you um, how you, you know, practice that, how, how you do that. Um, it might help us all out in learning about practicing and developing that creative skill. So number three, we've, we've talked about how creative people ask questions. They always are learning new things. Number three, creative people are curious. They're always looking out around them, trying to be open. They're not judgmental. They're not um, somebody who like, you know, decides um, right away how they feel about something or someone or, or um, you know, an activity or whatever. They're curious and open and, and um, seeking new ideas and always on the lookout. And this is a great reason to get outside. This is a great reason to travel to new places. I always find when I travel to new places, um, my mind just gets more creative because you see new things. It's a great idea then also to experience things like museums, um, to attend performances, to expose yourself to these experiences. As Steve Jobs says, experiences are just put together to be creative. Um, so you've got to have the experiences in order to put them together. So be a curious person. Get out there and experience new things as well. Number four, you've got to play and have fun. You've got to be childlike in order to develop that skill of creativity. So play an instrument. Try your hand at writing a poem. Even, you know, just write a letter to a dear friend or a family member. It doesn't have to be perfect at whatever you try to do. Just get your creative juices flowing. You don't even have to show it to anyone if you don't want to. I'm telling you, if I start drawing or painting, I probably won't show it to anybody right at first, but maybe as I develop that skill. And then finally, the fifth way that you can develop creativity as a skill is to use aromas to stimulate that creativity. Did you know that you can smell essential oils either like in a diffuser like this or in other ways where you can diffuse and have those aromas around you to develop your creative skills? A Japanese study discovered that when lavender essential oil was inhaled during a work break, it can improve your concentration once you get back to the task at hand. So that's a great way to improve your creativity. Rosemary, one of my favorites to put in the diffuser. A 2016 study found that students who worked in a room with the fragrance of rosemary essential oil in the air scored 5 to 7% higher on memory tests. So if you're going to put all those experiences together to create something, as Steve Jobs says, then you've got to have that great memory as well. So it, it, um, the fragrance of rosemary actually helped these students score 5 to 7% higher on memory tests. And then also rosemary has been associated for years with memory because there's a line in the play by Shakespeare in the play Hamlet. And he says there's rosemary. That's for rem remembrance. So for hundreds and hundreds of years, people have known that the aroma of rosemary's, rosemary helps you remember things. And then thirdly, lemon is a good one also. Lemon is one of my favorite essential oils. It's very inexpensive and smells wonderful. And in a study, in, it said that inhaling lemon essential oil helped improve the participant's ability to type. Workers who inhaled lemon essential oil made 54% fewer errors in a typing test. That's a big difference. And so I think it also has to do with that memory, you know, the muscle memory of typing. Um, so yeah, another study found that using lemon essential oil in aromatherapy helped to improve cognitive function in a group of Alzheimer's patients. They inhaled lemon and rosemary in the morning, and they inhaled lavender and orange essential oils at night, and it helped to improve their cognitive function. So there's some great, exciting studies out there about how aroma 
and how it can help you be more creative. So those are the, the, the ways to be creative. You wanna ask questions, you wanna learn new things, you wanna be curious and, and experience and, and be observant of those experiences. Take those in. You wanna play and have fun and be childlike. And then finally, you can use aroma to stimulate your creativity. So be a creative person. You know, for me, a lot of times it means, I've talked about this, I love cooking. It means creating a meal, being creative with a meal. Um, you know, another thing I love to do is create a warm, welcoming environment for guests. Um, one of the things that my mom taught me at a very early age is if you have somebody coming for dinner, you want to set the table and make it beautiful. You want to put knives, forks, and spoons on the table, napkins, everything that they're going to need, um, and make the table a beautiful setting so that then when, when your guests walk in, they feel very welcome and like you were prepared and waiting for them with open arms. Creating a piece of art creating music, poetry, these things don't have to be perfect. What's beautiful in one person's eyes may not be beautiful in another's eyes, but as long as you're exercising that skill of creativity, you're doing well. And then creativity can even be as simple as writing a heartfelt letter. So get out of the mundane and start being creative, not only at home in the things that you do, but in your work and out and about. You know, be creative in the way you interact with people in your work. Find ways and alternatives to make things better there. Um, obviously, you've got to play by the rules and, and uh, listen to your boss. But yeah, if you can make things better at work, your creativity skills will be exercised and you may get recognized as well for that. So that wraps it up for our learning how to be more creative. And I am curious, um, and I would love to ask, you know, thank you for, for watching. I'd love to ask for the future. What is your favorite topic that we cover with our Joy Tip of the Week? We generally cover one of four things. Tips for a healthy lifestyle, ways to shift your focus and be more positive, ideas for living in gratitude, and thoughts about learning new things. So of those four areas, what's the most important to you? What do you enjoy hearing about most? Again, I'll tell you, um, they're either tips for a healthy lifestyle, ways to shift your focus and be more positive, ideas for living in gratitude, or thoughts about learning new things. Those four areas are the areas that I love to cover. I'd love to hear from you what you like to hear about. Oh, Angie, thanks for, for commenting. I see that you like to get your coloring book out and colored pencils. Yes, it's so relaxing to do that. I know a lot of people, I did that for a while too. I don't know why I set it aside, but it is relaxing and there's no deadline. You just enjoy the process. I like that, Angie, good idea. Adult coloring books are a great way to relax and be creative and exercise that creativity skill. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time and remember, Joy isn't something that simply happens to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing joy every single day.